Hello everyone, my name is Ruby from the RubyGarmaNetwork.com. This is the part two uh, interview for Sandra Quesada uh, being uh, a counselor. So let's welcome Sandra again and we can start um, asking her a question uh, regarding pursuing the career of being a counselor. So Sandra, question number one for you. Yes. What type of counseling do you do? Oh boy, I do. <laughs> uh, how can I say? It's a combination of uh, different different uh, issues, I'm going mm -hmm. to say. And I just put them together. And I'm going to say in between emotional and spiritual Okay. Disconnection. <laughs> okay. And I try to put them together because to me that's the nucleo, you know, the, the main point mm -hmm. where the beginning of the problems. Or the stem of the problem yes, is. Yes. Okay. So um, I know you you already own and run a salon business, but what is your purpose in pursuing uh, to be a counselor? Well, by growing up in a very dysfunctional home, mm -hmm. uh, I'm realizing that taking the advantage of having this kind of work okay. by talking to my clients, uh, I noticed for years there's a lot of problems in the families. Okay. And I get the opportunity to talk to either the parents or the kids, mm -hmm. and and I can I can help, you know. Okay. Because they're already there. They're opening their hearts. Sometimes they just come to to talk. Mm -hmm. It's not really that they need the haircut. It's that they want to talk. Okay. And I have the opportunity. So why not study more, get more knowledge, mm -hmm. and. And help now with more tools. Sure. What schooling do you need to complete uh, before you can do counseling? Depending on what field you want to go, I went for family um, psychologies mm -hmm. one year. I took two semesters. And then I've been going to Al Anon since 2009. Okay. And by going to Al Anon since then, two or three times a week for two or three hours each time, and learning more about this particular situation about the alcoholism, you know, that's mm -hmm. what's Al Anon about. Um, I got all this, all this knowledge and all these tools combination with the family uh, psychologist that I took before. Mm -hmm. And that's that's all that's all the education that I got, you know, to become a counselor. Okay. Uh, and I've been going to all these additional trainings during these years. Um, uh, conference here, public uh, communication. I went to the public communication also for for years. Okay. Uh, I took some courses with uh, Dr. Cesar Lozano. Mm -hmm. And I took a lot of, it's, it's been a combination of years of knowledge, going to trainings, going to family meetings, going to uh, conferences about self-esteem. Uh, oh, it's, it's, it's been like different things together. Okay. So I know you mentioned that you participate in Al-Anon. What's the difference between Al Anon and the AA? It, is it similar? It's a big difference. It's what's the difference? Actually, AA started first. Oh, okay. From this uh, alcoholic anonymous name, uh, uh, Bill W. I don't even remember his name because okay. it's supposed to be anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> remain anonymous. Yes, remain anonymous. Okay. So he studied it, and then, like about fifteen years later, the family, the family members of these uh, AA members, 
were like realizing how come they're getting help and we don't. Mm -hmm. We need the help too. Okay. So that's when Alanon was born after okay. 15 years um, of uh, AA meetings mm -hmm. open, then Alanon. And it was the wives of these alcoholics. Oh, okay. Like the families of... The uh, family of the alcoholics. Okay. So AA is to help the alcoholics. Mm -hmm. And Alanon is non-alcoholics. Okay. That is to help the family and friends of the alcoholics. Oh, okay. It's two separates. So it's two separate. But we, al -Anon, we ask to the AA members, mm -hmm. let us use some of their uh, program. Okay. So we adopt it. Oh, okay. So like some of the plans and, mm -hmm. okay, so it's incorporated, incorporated. in al -Anon. In al -Anon. Okay. Um, all right. So how often do you participate in that area, the al -Anon? My goodness, since 2009, mm -hmm. I was going to al -Anon at the beginning, 2009 to, um, I'm going to say five years. Mm -hmm. I was going to al -Anon seven days a week. Oh, wow. I bought me the calendar and I was scheduling al -Anon almost every night after mm -hmm. work. Every night after work, different different meetings, different cities, and then uh, even Sundays. Mm -hmm. And then as I start feeling much better. I start sharing and sharing and sharing and sharing. And then I stop going less. Okay. And I continue to do, and, and it's been great. And that gave me a lot of pleasure that I've been there and, and that what I learned now I can share. Yes. Oh, okay. So you did this because for your own good? First of all, yes. Oh, okay. You you wanted to heal you. Yes, starting with me, yes. <laughs> okay. So uh, I guess that's how um, it starts. You know, you have to help yourself in yes, first, yes. being knowledgeable in that area. Um, I know that you also mentioned, uh, while we were talking earlier, um, why do you think a lot of people suffer from neurotics? It's a disconnection. Mm -hmm. Like I told you in the beginning, it's a disconnection between the mind, mm -hmm. the spirit, and your body. Mm -hmm. And by going to al -Anon, if you are obedient mm -hmm. and if you follow the steps, mm -hmm. it's 12 steps to follow, 12 uh, traditions, 12 concepts. If you put all this to work, uh, little by little, you are going to connect again. Okay. And then there's not going to be any um, disconnection. Okay. Because when we are neurotics, that 97% of the population are, mm -hmm. we are, it's a disconnection of mind, body, and spirit. You know, we are in pieces. Okay. By following these steps, little by little, we are going to connect again. If we don't, we're going to think something, we're going to feel something, and we're going to do something else. Yes. And I want to be... You know, one line straight. I want to say and do and think the same. I don't want to be in pieces. Okay. Um, by you talking to a lot of people now, what do you think the issues start from? From, you know, uh, we, we see a lot of this AA, alcoholic, al -Anon, and now... Um, Neurotics. Um, I know that there's a lot of uh, mental health issue nowadays. Where do you think this uh, issue is stemming from? Most of the times, and I'm going to give you a big number. Mm -hmm. It's from the childhood. It's from the childhood. Even from the when you're expecting the babies, it's a big number mm -hmm. uh, because. All these baby, these babies are feeling and listening to everything that is outside. 
Mm -hmm. So when you're born, you already come with the dysfunction. Okay. If you don't take care of that, when you're born, you're growing older, you're going to be carrying this backpack until when? Now, this is when you're in your mom's tummy. Mm -hmm. uh, let's say you burn and you've been growing up with a uh, disease, emotional disease. Mm -hmm. It's going to be there until you realize that you have one problem and you're going to start getting some help. Yes. Or else it's, gonna, it's just going to grow and grow and grow like any other disease. Until you cannot stop it anymore. Uh, yes. Oh, okay. And then... Uh, any disease starts little, and if you don't put the medicine on time, it's going to grow. And yeah. You're going to die. You're going to die. So with the emotional diseases, it's not that you're going to die physical, but you're going to die emotional. Mm -hmm. And you can create some diseases through the emotions. Yeah. And we don't want to get to there, you know. Okay. So as soon as we find out we have a problem or if somebody's noticing and get some help. And get some help. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I think some of the issues, um, I kind of like uh, your approach of um, taking care of or approaching uh, this issue of neurotics or mental health issues um, because uh, me or myself is also a trained um, mental health uh, they call it a first aider. But as a nurse, I wanted to go back to school and, and learn um, to be a mental health nurse practitioner. So I can pretty much also uh, assist because there's a lot of issues yes. going on. And um, I wanted to be able to help in that area as okay. well. So. That's another schooling for me. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so that's never coming. Never finish learning. Yes, never finish learning. So I'm pretty sure that uh, you also agree with me that all this issue starts from childhood yes. or at the beginning. That's where the stem of the issues are. Uh, or it can be genetics, correct? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, when you start the counseling, what is the process? Can when, you let us know? When you start? Mm -hmm. I, what do you mean when you start? When I start? So do you gather a uh, history of the patient first? Uh, what are the, uh, what do you need to comply? Um, is there a HIPAA, uh, you know, privacy that you need to keep? Uh, when you're doing your counseling, uh, and a lot of like that. that. Okay, a lot of that. Mm -hmm. uh, I I work anonymous, mm -hmm. and uh, I do my own protocol, mm -hmm. and I do my own uh, profile for my clients or patients or friends. Mm -hmm. um, very very professional, and um, because it's a family in risk, sometimes mm -hmm. it's a lot of. Anonymous is very, okay. very deep. Um, I forgot the word. Um, I do the analysis. I do um, like a friendship first. Mm -hmm. And once I get to know a little bit of the person, uh, I give them the freedom to start opening. Okay. If you're comfortable with me, so we can have a relation. Mm -hmm. uh, in common, you know, feel comfortable, feel free mm -hmm. uh, with this confidence and, and the trust mm -hmm. and feeling love. Mm -hmm. And whatever they didn't have at home, they're going to find it here. Oh, okay. Because since I was there, mm -hmm. I grew up in a dysfunctional home. Mm -hmm. So I know where these people coming from. Okay. And... I have a relation, you know, the the uh, the connection. So it's really important for you to establish that trust. Yes. 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 The okay. listening. Mm -hmm. First is a lot of listening. Listening and more listening. And once you listen and put in paper what you think is important, mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And sometimes little details that are not really that important, but maybe they will show up later. Later. Mm-hmm. Um, then I do my 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 analysis and um, and then we continue seeing each other as often as they can come to mm-hmm. see me, or maybe on the phone or you know very different ways now that we can do the therapies. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. So do you think it's better to do individual counseling opposed to doing a group session? You know what? I find it interesting doing the both ways because mm-hmm. when you do it in a group, whatever this person is sharing mm-hmm. is going to help this other one. And whatever this one is sharing is going to help this one. So this one is going to get maybe cured from what she hear from here or from there. Uh-huh. So that's that's a winning in the when we do groups. Okay. But when you do individual, of course, it's one to one. I like both ways. Yeah, like you like both, both ways. ways. Yeah. Okay. Do you think people are aware of where to go or to receive counseling that is affordable? Now that now we are more, the word is is more out now. Mm-hmm. Years ago, it was more like, oh, you're going to therapist, are you crazy? <laughs> you know, it's not that you're crazy. The crazies are in the hospitals. Yeah. <laughs> with medication. Okay. We've been having a lot of issues, mentally, physical, emotional. And now that we're learning that 95% of the diseases are, are coming, psychomatic. Mm-hmm. Diseases is coming from your mind. Yes. So we better take care of our mind before we get diabetes. Yeah. The before we get cancer. Mm-hmm. Before we get gastritis. Mm-hmm. Because we are creating those diseases. Yes. So yeah, now it's more open now. A lot of people know more that we need the help and mm-hmm. this out there. And yeah, it's not as expensive as people used to think. No, yes. No. Okay. Um yeah, maybe people don't have the resources, so they don't get some help, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. basically. So, okay, Sandra, uh, I know you have a group uh, that you do the counseling together, and you want to invite um, our audiences okay. if they needed uh, counseling that is affordable. Uh, you guys can um, call Sandra and her group. Um, so tell the audience mm-hmm. uh, where can they find you uh, so that they can get some counseling. Okay. Um, as Alanon member, I can tell you you are welcome to come. It's free, it's in every city, uh, it's in almost every language. You can just go to the 800 number, Alanon, uh, and get the, you give them the zip code that you live, mm-hmm. and they can help you find a group that it's near oh, okay. your address. Um, my home group is still closed. Mm-hmm. It's in Torrance, California. It's still closed. And for some time, I was doing meeting groups at my business since it's pretty big. And it was a lot of people were we were needing the groups, mm-hmm. uh, so I started doing it uh, in my hair salon, in the facial room. Uh, it came out very good, excellent idea. Um, we can help each other, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, you also do? Uh, do you only do face to face, or they can call you and do counseling that way? So no, we can do face to face. We can do uh, if it's not in group, we can do individuals. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. Oh, okay. Yeah, no problem. Whatever, oh. whatever is uh, available f- at the moment. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, we're on our last uh, question for Sandra. What can you advise our audience, especially those that want to pursue that career that you have, so that they also be successful? What do they need to do? As a counselor. As a counselor, I'm going to say you have to love yourself first. Mm -hmm. You have to really, really love yourself so you can love others. 
Okay. It starts right there. Because you need to be full of love to share with others, okay. to help others. You got to feel the pain of others. And me, my own experience, because I grew up in a very dysfunctional home, I know what it's to be there. Okay. I know what's hell. Mm -hmm. And I won't like to see, I'm going to say my neighbors or my friends or my family to suffer or to go through what I went. Correct. So to help others, uh, there's different programs. Now even on internet, um, minor courses you can take, uh, additional trainings. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of information now out there that we can grab and, and start again, uh, start little. Uh -huh. Start from the bottom. Don't don't try to do big steps because this this kind of work is from your heart. Correct. Yeah. Um, you have to love the work. You, you have, have to, to be compassionate. Yes, compassionate. This is not an easy job. Uh, and don't think about the money in this one. <laughs> don't think about the money. No. Because there's a lot of volunteer work. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That, that uh, you need to do if you really love yes. uh, to help others. Yes. Because I think there's a lot of people that are in need that cannot afford exactly. um, counseling. So even just, you know, somebody that they can talk to, mm -hmm. um, the one that knows how to listen. And <laughs> that's basically. right. Basically. So That's right. thank you so much, Sandra, for um, joining us and letting us know your experiences and counseling. I think this is really, really helpful, even though there's not a lot of um, regulation and compliance, but basically this is uh, geared towards privacy and um, respect for... Exactly the people that you're trying to help. Yes, yes. Thank you so much. Welcome, welcome, welcome. If you like this video and you want to see more content, please comment, like, and subscribe, and see you in the next video.